Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Wind Down Fridays with Give a Sister a Hug. I'm your girl, Arthur Erica. I have my fabulous co-host with me on today, Arthur Kim with me. So, as you guys all know, this is October, Domestic Violence Awareness and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And this is the survival story edition of Give a Sister a Hug. So today we have a special guest. Her name is Miss Davida. She's gonna come on and um tell her story. And um we just gonna go ahead on and just pass the mic on to Miss Davida. Thanks for um, allowing give a sister a hug to um platform to share your story and thanks for taking time out your busy day to Eva coming on with us. Thank you, Erica. It's so nice to be here and to share my stories. So I appreciate you for building this platform for women like me to share our stories. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Davida, as she said. I am from Charleston, South Carolina. Um, my mom, when it comes to domestic violence, I saw my mom get abused when I was about, you know, before I was, well, I can't say before I was born, but my mom was being abused before I was born. And even like, I came out really light. My mom, my dad thought my mom had an affair with a white man. So he punched her right after she had me, like in the hospital bed. And to this day, she still has a scar above her lip um, that she wears. Today is actually her birthday. And um, I think when I was about two years old, that's when she had had enough of the abuse and she didn't want me to see that. So, um, you know, we moved to Charleston, South Carolina because I was born in Columbia. That's where my dad is. And after that, he remarried and his wife that he's still married to, you know, he abused her as well. And they had three children one of which her name is Deandra Roach. And she was um, she was the baby between me and my other sister and then her, like on my dad's side. And me and Deandra, we were, um, we were the closest out of all their children for some reason. I'm not sure what it was, but like Deandra, we call her Dee Dee. Dee Dee was like, she always called me her big sister whenever we go shopping. They'd be like, who is that? Because, you know, I lived in Charleston and Charleston is about two hours away from Columbia. Whenever I would go, whenever I would go visit, we would hang out. And they'd be like, who is that? She's like, oh, that's my big sister, Vita. And it always just made me proud. And in that moment, I didn't know what it meant to be a big sister until I had to step up to the plate for her funeral. So fast forward to when she was about 18 years old. She had this boyfriend of hers, well, ex-boyfriend, you know, they were dating and then um, they broke up because he was too toxic. My dad never really liked him, but you know how they say girls typically attract to the guys that remind them of their dad. Um, so she had a new boyfriend. He had a girlfriend. And one day she decided to see him after work or working at Walmart. Mind you, he already had pulled a gun out on her before, pushed her. She never told me or... Um, my dad or her mom, but she told her friends. And unfortunately they didn't tell us until um, they testified in court when she was murdered by him. So on January 29th, um, she was found on the ground by someone walking the dog because he had shot her about 15 times and robbed her. He took her phone, took her wallet and everything. We still don't know where it is to this day uh, because he, he never, um, he never confessed to doing it. So he, you know, took her wallet, took her gun, not took her gun, took her everything and left her on the ground. Mind you, when he killed her, he was wearing the same pair of shoes that she bought her, he, that she bought him for Christmas. She was killed in January. And, you know, this is just Christmas, December. She had brought him some shoes. Right. And that's how they were able to match because they saw her on camera buying these shoes for him for Christmas because that's what he wanted. You know, the same shoes he killed her in. And, Needless to say, of course, we were devastated. We were traumatized. I had never received so much, like, so traumatic news until that day. Like, it made me stick to my stomach to hear someone do this to someone you really love. And um, needless to say, about three years later, because I hate the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. um, we got justice for 60 years. He's now in prison. I wanted him to have life, but you know, we'll take 60 years. He right. never confessed and he had a bomb attorney. So it, it was a really tough fight. We were in court for about two weeks, even though we had evidence, we had text messages of him saying that he was going to kill her by either a gun, knife, or setting her on fire. He like planned everything, but it was, you know, the criminal justice system is very, um, 
it's confusing sometimes, especially when you don't understand it. And even before the um, the court, the trial, I had actually went back to grad. Uh, so I'm sorry, I went to school, I went to grad school to get my mm -hmm. master's degree in criminal justice, so that way I could understand how this works. So that way, you know. We're not surprised, like, when we hear stuff, like, when I heard the stuff in the news, I'm not in the news, in court, when they told us about the evidence and everything, it wasn't shocking to me because I understand it now. Mm -hmm. um, but, and that that is what propelled me to start a nonprofit called Dear Deandra, and we empower those affected by domestic violence. We really want to work towards teens because teens really need it the most, yes. especially when they're dating. Because of course, you know, us adults, we date, but it's, it really starts when we're teens. And sometimes we don't know until things happen. And growing up, Deandra saw domestic violence as a form of love. And with Dear Deandra, we want to show that that's not a form of love and that you can be loved by someone who doesn't hurt you. And, um, it, but really it starts in self care. So that's what my personal brand of Venus Diary is about. But I also tie back to my nonprofit, Dear Deandra. And we also have um, an upcoming Jazz Brunch fundraiser this Sunday coming up. Well, I'm sorry, next Sunday, October 24th. That's good. That's good. So it was, okay, I got a little confused. So it was it her boyfriend or the new boyfriend that murdered her? It was her ex-boyfriend. She had, she had a boyfriend at the time. And it's crazy because her ex-boyfriend, his name was um oh i forgot his name oh um dre andre andre blamed her current her boyfriend at the time saying that you know he was with her he's the one who did it when he actually had her boyfriend i forgot his name i never met him but her actual boyfriend was out of the state and he had someone to prove that he was out of the state at the time wow and then so how is your mom is my stepmom or my mom your mom um, well, when it happened, you know, she was heartbroken because she saw Diddy like a child to her as well, even though she wasn't, but my mom was heartbroken and it made her sick to her stomach to hear that because she couldn't imagine it happening to any of me and my sister that I have one mom. Mm -hmm. And does she blame herself because it would, because it was seen in the home, you guys seen that with her? Um... Well, my mom doesn't blame herself um, because she left when I was about two because she couldn't take it anymore. She didn't want me to see it. And then um, I do know that my older sister, she witnessed it, and she, but she's not in a toxic relationship. However, I don't know if my stepmom um, blames herself because she's the one who, you know, allowed my dad to do this for many years. And he's not, he's no longer abusive. To her but you know they're still together and they are he, he i remember we went on vacation about three years ago and they got to altercation at the table and started yelling at each other for, like they didn't care about people being around us eating they yell he slammed the water he got up and got in her face and still right so needless to say i don't really talk to my dad's side anymore because of my nonprofit. It's a long story but right I, when i totally get it yeah yeah, my stepmom, here's the thing. My stepmom never really liked me, even before I was born. She was actually having a fair, she, yeah, she was my dad's side piece before I was born. Yeah. Girl. And like, she never wanted him to pay child support. Even like two, three years ago, my dad helped me on a tire, something for my car. And he had to tell me, just tell her that you paid for it. She never wanted me to have anything. So with this nonprofit, and of course, it's a nonprofit. We're not making money, but we're making an impact. Right. She, you know, she's like, well, I don't want you to have this nonprofit. You don't have my permission to use my daughter's name. I'm like, boo boo, this is tax exempt. We are registered by the state. So you can't tell me, you already took my mom from my dad. You can't take the nonprofit because right now it's much more bigger than what she sees it as. It's more about the women who are going to be impacted by Deandra's name. And people are always like asking me, like, so are you going to change the name because your stepmom? I'm like, no, we got to say her name. Just like how we say Breonna Taylor, we say the other woman's name. When it comes yes. To yes. Like, no matter, we got to yes. say names even when it comes to domestic violence. Yes. I, 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 when I say I agree with that, I agree with that. It's, it's something that is needed, you know, in the black community. Um, and that's, I have a nonprofit as well, um, based out in Texas. And that is a struggle, especially in the black community yeah. with people talking about it, 
and not just talking about it. Everything is like a hush hush. Don't you know you're not supposed to use their name. You know that's the problem. We're trying to change the narrative. Mm -hmm. That that that's the whole point. Because if if nobody knows what's going on, how do we fix it? Right. And we have to fix it because I don't want I don't want to be quiet. And then the next person, even though he finally left me, but then he goes out and he kills somebody. Exactly. So then it'll make me feel some type of way because exactly. I should have said something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just so don't I have understand. a question. So um in the past, did your sister ever talk about um him being abusive to her? No, she never told me or um or dad or anything. She he just never liked him, but I never knew why. But I'm sorry, my dad never liked him. Let me be more specific. But I never knew why. Um, but she never told me. I remember like I coordinated like a summer party at my apartment and it was me, her, and my other sister with my dad. And he came. And I'm like, wait a minute. You did not have my permission to bring him to the house. What is going on? She's like, well, he just wanted to eat some pizza because I ordered pizza for us. You know, some party pizza that's kind of going in the hand. Um, I said, oh, you can give him a slice, but he cannot come to my apartment because I know him like that. And it was mm-hmm. nighttime, but we, we never knew about it. So how did, like, when it came down to it, and I know you say he um he got 60 years. How did they, what did they charge him with? Did they charge him with murder or manslaughter? They charged him with murder. Yeah, they charged him with murder. And I remember... Premeditated? Because he thought about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. Good, good. And I remember, despite the past, despite what's going on between me and my stepmom, I was still there in court beside her, holding her hand. Mm -hmm. Because it was a hard time. Mm -hmm. It It wasn't about... It wasn't about me and trying to be petty, like, you know, you don't like me, I ain't got to be by you. It was about right. more the support for Deandra mm-hmm. and um, being there for her. Mm-hmm. And I liked it, the fact that you said he got 60 years, wanted life, but we accept that because some 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 people don't get closure at all. Some people don't get justice at all. So right. him, him getting 60 years is, I know he going to set that because... Mm-hmm. He did murder, and he should have got life because you you thought about it, you planned it, you did everything. So your ass should have got life, but sixty years right. ain't. And I know some people say, "No, I want life," and this that he doing sixty years. He bought yeah. life for him. Pretty much. Was he, was he young? Was what were they young? Like early twenties? Yeah, he was about twenty four, twenty five. Okay. And if he okay. do sixty years, what? He's gonna be what eighty years old. That's life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so I mean, you know, hats off. I I accept sixty years because mm-hmm. one thing I do know, his ass sitting in jail, and not only he not hurting her, he's not hurting nobody else. Amen. So and that's, that's a bigger true. thing. We know that he's not hurting nobody else, and maybe he might get his shit together. You know, who knows? Maybe. We're hoping. I know that when we were at court, his baby mama was looking at us mugging. I, I happened to be in the bathroom same time as her, and she just like looked at me disgusted, like who, the, you know, who you think, you know, like is she? They, the whole family was mugging us, and it's like, are y'all, are y'all serious right now? And, that, and that's what I don't understand. I under, I mean, I kind of feel for the child. Yeah. But your daddy messed up. At the end of the day, your daddy messed up, and he has to suffer the consequences for his action. Girl. <laughs> Period. And let me Period. tell you something. I, we, we, the reason why it was extended by like three more days for trial was because 11 of the jurors had voted. It was one who could not, she did not participate in anything. You know her reason? It was a black woman. Her reason was, I'm not voting because the system is always trying to put a black man in jail. See? But he what? killed somebody. Are you serious? Yes! He killed somebody. Yes. It was so, oh my, it was it was heavy. It was heavy that day to hear that. The judge had to call everybody in. It was like, hey, we understand there's a lot of emotions going around right now, but this family is affected. Please participate and vote. Are you serious? So the judge really had to make her vote. Girl. Yeah. Girl. Girl. It be your only people. It be well, your let me ask you this. People. Let me ask you this. Did y'all have any intake in that juror? You think she was with the family in any way? I don't know. She could have been, because she was looking at us like, 
you know, during the trial, I didn't realize it until my aunt, my aunt, you know, pointed it out after we got news about the family. I mean, about the, this juror, like even when the judge was saying what she was saying, like she looked at us nasty, like had a little attitude. So I was like, you know, I never thought about that. Could be. Because let me tell you, they get, you know, um, they get the pool, they get the pool of jury too. They get to pick to the juror who they're going to have on the stand. So, you know, that's why I asked, like, did she know the family in any way? Because you just never, even though if you're a juror and you know one of the families, you're supposed to say stuff. Everybody know, everybody ain't honest like that. And everybody's yes. not going to say nothing. You know, because that's how my mama, my mama was um actually doing jury duty. The police officer that arrested my brother, she she was on she was on his case. And when they went through the, the jury and my mom was like, hey, um, <laughs> she was like, I know the police officer. And the police officer looked at her and he was like, yep, we know each other. And they put her off that case with him because they knew each other. They was familiar with each other, even though he arrested my brother, but they still knew each other. Oh, so wow. that's why I'm wondering, did she know the family? Because. Mm -hmm. people not gonna honestly say that you know oh i know that person or whatever because they yeah. want to know yeah, it's right. just crazy you know and then you know what you know what the crazy thing is she was an older black lady that's the crazy thing crazy. about it because yeah. we we supposed to help each other right mm-hmm mm -hmm. And I mean, he did wrong. At the end of the day, he was wrong. And I mean, if we have the evidence, and I remember you saying that he had like this turn, this attorney that was doing everything to make sure. I mean, were they trying to plead it out to something, you know, small? Yeah, they were saying that she was killed by somebody else. They couldn't really put a finger on it. They were saying like her phone, like after she was killed, like her phone was with his, but all of a sudden it stopped and he went somewhere. That's because probably turned it off. Right. Like, he, like you know, the ping, the towers, blah, blah. Like he made it seem, he, he was really good. I ain't even gonna lie. The family got their money's worth working with him, but it, I don't, I can't remember all the details. I had, I wrote in the journal, it's actually back at home, but um, it, it he worked, he worked really hard to get that man, try to, you know, make him, seem innocent but it was it was crazy and to see those pictures of her i never saw her um I, you know when uh, other than her funeral other than the wake you know when she was done up that's when i saw her but to see those pictures of her and to see the scene it was very traumatic um even though we learn about it in school and, you know, we talk about it and we, we watch it in cops and we're not watching on first right. and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hit you until somebody that you know. Right. It's somebody, you know, right, right, right. I, I mean, I get that. I, it's, the, it's the same way. I get that. And, yeah. it's, and it's crazy. I, and, I mean, wow. Yeah. And the thing is they, we also have it on camera, him buying the gun that he shot her with because, you know, all gun shops that got cameras, they got, yeah. But the thing is she was shot with two different guns. So we really believe that there was someone else. We think it was a girl because he had a girlfriend. The girlfriend did not like my sister at all. Um, the girlfriend was actually being in cooperative during, uh, like right after it happened, after the incident happened, that police tried to get her to come in for questions. She was not cooperating. And then they went back to the house to get her. And that's when a bunch of thugs, they say, came to the house and was like, you know, giving the police a hard time. So they never really pursued yeah, they never really pursued the girlfriend. Yeah, I know. I know. But what kind I of know. shit you? You the police. Girl. You the they police. Say, Fuck they these say. thugs. You the police. That's Girl. why I'm looking like, wait a minute, what? Who yeah. is running who? She was shot with two different guns. Um, And it's like, how could he have shoot, shot her, you know, this many with times? Two different, guns. two different guns. And it was a quick, it was a like the, the way they had it time from her saying, hey, I'm here. Cause they got her text message records, um, to you know, to the point where he was FaceTiming his girlfriend, saying, "I'm here, I'm nervous." Like they got all that, and it was so quick. So for him to be able to shoot with two different guns, it wasn't adding up. But you know, like I said, we'll take the sixty years. I just hope ah. that somebody else involved that she gets what she deserves. 
because karma is a mug okay but oh my god you, like the that. question is how do she sleep at night right right so if you um let me ask you this if you was face to face with him what would you say you, well, if you had the opportunity and you was face to face with him what would be your words to him like you on um, he on this podcast right now what would your last words would be to him well i i know being a christian is hard i okay right right and if you gotta drop an f-bomb you gotta drop an (laughs) f-bomb you gotta drop an (laughs) f-bomb but i did write him a letter and i was gonna send it to him and i never did but it was just basically saying hey i know that you're going through your emotions right now this is like when it was fresh so I guess I'm trying to use that. I know you're going through your emotions right now, and I know you miss her because I know how much she loved you, how much you loved her. But please, we need your support. We need you to tell the police the truth. Um, I know you have a daughter, and I know you don't want anything to happen to her. So please just help us in getting justice for Deandra. And I promise you that we we will forgive you. Like, I was trying to be that person. Right. But I, I will say this, if I do see him, um, just please tell the truth. Just go ahead and tell the truth. We know that you did it. Um, you ain't shit. And um, right. my sister did not deserve that. If, if anybody did, it's you. So right. you still can tell the truth because he never, like I said, he never confessed. You still can tell the truth. And, you know, you may get lesser charge. But I don't know. I don't know if they'll do that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. if you right. know, sometimes when they confess, it kind of helps the sentence. I don't know. But Well, it might be able to, if they show remorse then you know when they get if he's able to go to the parole then that's when he will be able to say you know i have something he will show some type of remorse and maybe you know they might think about letting him go but you know maybe mm, yeah i know well, he laughed when they gave him um the verdict the audacity girl also, he he also laughed when they were showing the evidence girl <laughs> whoa he crazy yeah. He crazy for real. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Like yeah, he at we where he need to be. That's where he at. Yeah, yeah. He well, yeah. where he at. That's where he need to be. Like, I got you. I got you. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that will be. Um, I think that's good closing words. You know, because yes, we mm-hmm. all want that closure, and you know, it it should have been life. But hey, I could live with sixty years. You know, again, I can live with that. And I do understand that the family can live with that. I know you want more, but we got justice. And that's something that a lot of women that's in domestic violence that they don't get. Even if they are alive or dead, they don't get that because it's so much a red tape that they have to go through. Yeah, you're right. So for him to get 60 years, hey, I can sleep. I can go to sleep with that. Yeah, Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, tell us right. about the um your not for profit organization. Um so yes, it's called Dear Deandra. I started it in 2018. I um the first event was a women's empowerment fashion show because I didn't whenever people talk about domestic violence, it's kind of like a boring topic, like you know, domestic violence is bad, you know, da da da. But I wanted to make it an uplift an uplifting experience at my event. So we had the first um fashion show, the first event, the fundraiser. We honored all women, like today's women, like Michelle Obama. Uh, well, first of all, we didn't have those people there. We had people dressed like them. Let me be right. Uh, uh, a doctor, a college girl, because it can happen to any of them. But we wanted right. to show them in a positive light. Then, of course, we had two domestic violence speakers. And we also had someone talking about financial independence for women, because that's the main thing. So mm-hmm. um, after that, we had an art gala. And this year, we're having a Sunday jazz brunch. Because as you can see, we kind of make it an uplifting light and um, not like a boring panel. I just, I can't do that. I, I can't mm-hmm. do that. So I want to mm-hmm. do what I, you know what I'm saying? I want to do for the community right. what I want to see. And right. honestly, like what, what we've been doing so far is just having events to raise awareness. But hopefully next year, I'm just going to claim it and exist. I'm going I'm going to claim it speaking to exist. And we're going to have a mentorship program. Mm-hmm. where we're going to mentor young girls in high school, maybe middle school too, depending on you know what kind of support we're able to get from the community. Um, those in the lower income neighborhoods and just teaching them self-care, teaching them um, etiquette, teaching them defense tactics, 
the, mm-hmm. the dynamics of dating, red flags, green flags, all those types of things mm-hmm. that we typically don't have access to. That's what right. your is going to come into and um, provide for young girls. So that's the purpose of this event, to put us on the map and to get us the funds that we need to implement this mentorship program. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm with you, girl. I'm with you. I'm in Texas, Bob. We'll figure out something. We'll come together and do something. Okay, thank you. Most we're definitely. Trying, yeah, we're trying to be global. That's why we're partnering with another nonprofit that is global right now. So this is our first partnership with another nonprofit, and they're doing amazing things for teens. And so, you know, when 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 women come together, great things happen. And Absolutely. I'm to be my first partnership. Typically, yes. I do events by myself. Now we have a PR mm-hmm. team. We have this partnership and it's just going to be amazing yep it is and i think that's a great, that. yes mm-hmm. very much i think yep. that's a great um move that you did move um come up with a not-for-profit that um yep. dedicate to your sister um much success you know with all of that and um and and there was hope we could raise a whole lot of awareness with it because especially when we start talking about teens because I feel like like you said it starts with teenagers like Mm -hmm. the mess teen dating it starts at 12 years old which is crazy Mm -hmm. yeah so it starts there and I mean if we educate our teens Mm -hmm. that way when they get older they can make better decisions when it comes down to relationships yep most definitely that's my feel. Um, you have anything, sister? No, that this has been uh great. Like, uh, thank you for you know allowing us to share you know your sister's story, and you know uh, we will be you know staying in touch because you know we gonna do some things together. Well, definitely, y'all in Dallas. Oh yeah, I might have to come visit. I heard a lot. Of- <laughs> um, so before we leave out, um, the Vita, give us, give us. Give a lady or a man, because we do have men that's in domestic violence, what your lasting words for them? I would say to love yourself first before you love this person. Obviously, mm-hmm. they don't love you. So right, right now, you got to depend on you. If you have a child, you got to also focus on your child and take self-care as a priority. Mm-hmm. And then also look at the statistics they are not they're not fake they're real i know the pain of losing someone and i want you to be the best that you can be with yourself like in a relationship with yourself and then Mm -hmm. of course before you're in a relationship with someone else and to just honor the life that god has given you because so many people are dying and if you're here alive then just honor the fact, be, show gratitude, and say no. Leave this relationship and put yourself first and your child too. Okay, that part. So that's that part. that's that's that part. that's what we gonna leave on. So, yes. as you all know, you know it's not easy, and I want to thank everyone um from tuning in to Wind Down Fridays. We'll give us a the hub, the Survivor Edition. But just know, ladies, make sure today. You start that safety plan. Make sure you give that safety plan to someone that you trust. Don't just give it to anybody. Um, you may you don't have to leave today. You don't have to leave tomorrow. But just make sure we have a safety plan and progress and somebody that you trust have and know that plan. Don't just spread it to everybody. Just that one person that you trust and make that move. It's going to be all right. It's going to be dark days, but it, them dark days are going to get better. So I want to thank Davida for coming on to share her sister's story. And um, Mm -hmm. we wish you much success with the uh, not-for-profit organization. And mentorship will happen next year. And we're going to claim it and receive it. So thanks for tuning in to Wind Down Fridays. We'll give a sister a hug, the Survivor Edition. I'm your girl, Arthur Erica. I have my fabulous co-host, Arthur Kim, with us today. And I want to say thanks again to Davida. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Ooh, that was really.